Uh, well, the Bay Area has been reacting to the the decision in Ferguson to not indict Officer Brown, in, uh, Officer Wilson, rather, a few days ago. Here's a look at some of the protests that uh, we've been following over the last few days uh, in Oakland and also in San Francisco. Joining us now is our political analyst, Michael Yockey, to talk about the Bay Area reaction and what authorities have been doing to kind of you know, control some of these protests. Well, in, in fairness, compare, I was here during the Rodney King riots in, mm -hmm. in 92, and there were a lot more people out on the street. I think thousands upon thousands of people coming down market. They were coming through the mission. They were coming from all different areas, and the police had a very difficult time trying to control what was going on. There were some motorcycles lit on fire on the street. This was a lot different, but it points out that a lot of what happens here is, is going to depend on how authorities deal with what's going on in Ferguson. I think that people are taking their cues for what's happening in Ferguson. I think things are turning more peaceful. They're going to more prayer uh, vigils. Uh, there's a mass uh, today in, in Ferguson. There's a march to the governor's mansion. These are things that are going to be very important at, that people here take their cues from. But I also think it's important for people in the in the Bay Area, leadership in the Bay Area, the Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Jean Kwan, the new incoming Mayor Libby Schaff, uh, Mayor Ed Lee, to take a look and, and, and work with people in a way that I think that maybe hasn't been quite as done as it was in 92. In 92, we worked with people like uh, Cecil Williams, other people in, in the clergy and the faith community to try and bring people together to talk about how difficult this was and give people a, a voice and a place to go. Uh, that hasn't quite happened here yet. It's still rather spontaneous. And I think that the more that city leadership tries to work with, work with those individuals and create that kind of atmosphere, the better off it will be. But again, a lot of it will, be t will depend on what happens in Ferguson. A lot of, uh, quite frankly, a lot of people are hoping that uh, Eric Holder or even the president would go to Ferguson in, the, in sometime during the holiday season to try and put everything to rest and, and bring some kind of calm to the area. Because it's lo right now, Ferguson is still pretty hot. It is, and it's, it seems like it's definitely uh, struck a chord with uh, the Bay Area and some parts of our community here as well. Yeah, and it's interesting that, um, you know, you, you I sit back and I sort of watch how all this happens. As a former elected official, you, you see how individuals and groups change. You know, the one tactic that's been rather new in the last 10 years has been blocking major roadways. Mm -hmm. That's new. That never happened before. Now they're people are blocking 580. They're blocking the Bay Bridge. They blocked 101 in, in, in Southern California. You know, people got creative in the way they want to express their dissatisfaction. And a lot of it is because, again, we have to do more in... in as officials to reach out to people and say, especially in the California where we tend to be more sympathetic with this issue, to say this is what we care about, this is how to do it constructively, and whatever you do, don't get involved in in the vandalism and damage because for a lot of points, all you're doing is really hurting people who can't afford it the most, small business people, stopping, stopping uh, people who work on an hourly basis from getting to their jobs, where every hour that they work means getting food on their table. These are, these are all points that have to be made and communicated to people. Let's change gears to talk about immigration reform. Uh, the Republicans are floating an idea yeah. to separate immigration funding and this could maybe lead to a government shutdown? Yeah, this is interesting because you heard very quickly after the election that Mitch McConnell and John Boehner were saying, we're not going to shut down the government. Well, guess mm. what? Uh, right now, there is a funding pl plan being floated in the House of Representatives that would fund every part of the government except for the Immigration Service for the remainder of the year. And it would only fund it for a short period of time until the new Congress gets in. Already battle lines are being drawn. Nancy Pelosi has said that she won't go along with it. We haven't heard what the president will say, but if they try and do a two, I think if they try and do a two-part funding bill, which would put the immigration immigration issue squarely uh, in the new Congress, there's a very good chance that the president will veto it, send it, and very good chance that the Senate Democrats won't go for it as well. So the idea of a shutdown December 11th go, went from zero right mm -hmm. after the election to I think it's starting to trend upwards, and you'll see more and more of this during this week as Congress comes back into session. How quickly things can change, and what would that, uh, what sort of impact would that have here in California? Well, I mean, it had a big impact the last time, especially in the defense industry. 
industry. A lot of contractors uh, in aerospace are here in California in the space industry, uh, SpaceX and others who rely on it. Funding gets stopped automatically. You have a lot of you have a lot of different kind of federal contracting programs that kind of go into shutdown mode. So it does have a big impact uh, in California and at the military bases as well. But we'll we'll see. Right now, you know, it's just floating. They're putting Stare. the idea out there. But uh, watch watch what happens this week. Okay. All right, Michael Yaki, thank you for joining us. Thank We're you. back with more after the break.